welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me again, Alex, and I'm back for another episode of my international student journey here in Canada. So for today's video, a lot of you has been requesting for an English version of how to become a Canadian registered nurse. <laughs> Before anything else, don't forget to like and subscribe in my YouTube channel and thank you so much for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it guys and without further ado, let's get started. Disclaimer, this is purely based on my experience. This is what the steps that I made, the process that I took to become a Canadian registered nurse. So for those who are new to my YouTube channel, by the way, my name is Alex and I am an international student here in Canada way back 2019. I took one year program, which is palliative care and nursing. And as of today, I have my active license as a Canadian registered nurse. Um, I have this expectation before that since I was an international student here in Canada and I was a registered nurse from my home country, I thought that after the program, which is palliative care and nursing, since I took it here in Canada, I thought that I could be considered as a registered nurse here in Canada. But it's a big no-no. So for us, international educated nurses, we have to undergo process. And that's what we are going to talk about today. So first step, we have to open an account in NNAS. Again, let's talk about what is NNAS. NNAS stands for National Nursing Assessment Service. So what do they do and why do we need NNAS? NNAS has three main roles in our application. First, they will be the one to verify our credentials. Second, they will be the one to compare our credentials to a Canadian standards. Third, they provide online storage for our education and registration credentials. So now you know what is NNAS. So now let's talk about the application. For you to open an account for NNAS, you have to pay for 650 US dollars. With that, you have 12 months or a year to comply and submit all the requirements. If you fail to comply within a year and then you have to extend for another year, you have to pay for another 180 US dollars for reactivation fee. So you have to take note that if you open your account, you have a year to comply your requirements. So now let's proceed with the requirements. So first, you have to submit a proof of identity documents. So you can use your passport, your um, driver's license, or any government issued documents, or as well as your um, license ID, you can use that. In my case, I use my passport and my PRC ID. So first, you're gonna photocopy it, and it should be notarized by a lawyer or any public notary. So that's the first requirement. Second is you have to submit a nursing education form. Now that you have your NNAS account, you can download the forms. And then you send this form directly to your school and your school will fill up the forms and send directly to the NNAS office. For instance, your BS nursing. Uh, in my case, I graduated BS nursing in at Central Mindanao University. So I fill up this form, I send it to my school and the school directly sent the papers to the NNAS office. So for you, if you have master's degree, you also include that. So you download the form, send it to the school where you had your master's, and then the school will send directly to the NNAS office. So any education that is related to nursing profession, you can include it in your application. So in my case, I have my BSN nursing in the Philippines. I included also my um, palliative care nursing here in Canada so I download the forms and send it directly to my school which is Niagara College in Welland Campus and the school sent the papers directly to NNAS so any education related for nursing you can include it in your NNAS application. Third, you have to submit a nursing registration form so in this case it's for your license so in my case I am a registered nurse in the Philippines so again I will download these forms in an NAS account and then I will send it directly to PRC and then the PRC will send it directly to NNAS. So for example, you're a registered nurse in the Philippines and you're a registered nurse in Saudi Arabia or you're a registered nurse in the United States. So whatever license that you had, you download this form, you send it directly to the nursing body 
and then they will send it directly to the NNAS. So for example, in the Saudi Arabia, so you have to send this form to the Saudi Council or in Singapore. And if it's in the States, if you're a registered nurse in New York States and you submit this form to the New York um, nursing body, and then they will directly send it to the NNAS office. So everything should be sent directly to the NNAS office. Your role is just you will send the forms and they will fill up the forms and send it to the NNAS office. Fourth is you have to submit your nursing practice form or employment form. So again, you will download this form in your NNAS account and you will submit it directly to your employer. Let the employer fill up the forms and let them send it directly to the NNAS. So when it comes to experience, it has to be you work and function as a nurse. So if you work in the hospital, if you work in a, uh, you work as a company nurse, you work as a school nurse, all of those experiences are included. So if you work in Saudi, if you work in Singapore, or if you work in the States, whatever experience that you have that you function as a nurse is included. Actually, unfortunately, if you work as a caregiver, it's not going to be included because you didn't function and work as a nurse. So it has to be that you worked as a nurse. As part of our NNAS application, we also need to prove and provide our English proficiency. So we could um, comply for this through IELTS or Salban. When it comes to IELTS, the lowest score that they could accept is for reading, it's 6.5, speaking, 7, listening, 7.5, and writing, 7. So overall, it's 7 and um, in academic format. In the other form of English test, it's called Salban. Salban stands for Canadian English Language Benchmark assessment for nurses the lowest acceptable score for Selban is for reading it's eight speaking eight listening is ten writing is seven by the way guys um in different province here in canada comes with different nursing bodies but here in canada actually in the province of ontario it is the only province here in canada that you can waive your english proficiency i'll talk about it in a different video about english proficiency and how to waive your English proficiency, meaning you don't have to take those exams just to prove that you are proficient in speaking in English, reading and writing and listening. So there's a different process for that and I will make a video on how to waive your English proficiency. Now that you know what is NNAS, about the fees and about the future requirements, let's talk about the entire application. Your NNAS application, you will have to choose a province. So which province would you like to practice or you want it to be assessed? So in my case, I put the province of Ontario. So in Ontario, if you wanted to work in Ontario, you put the province of Ontario. If you wanted to work in the province of, um, province of um, Nova Scotia, then you put the province of Nova Scotia. So in different province comes, comes with different nursing bodies. States, for example, New York State, so they have their own um, states, Connecticut, um, California State, so they have different nursing bodies. So that's how it works here in Canada as well. It's called the province. So you add the province. In my case, I add the province of Ontario. That's where my main application is, in the province of Ontario. Nursing group. So in a nursing group, it means if you want to be assessed as RN or LPN. So I want you to add both RN and LPN to wherever province that you wanted to, to work and to be assessed. Why? It's just saved times and effort. Like for example, if you add both RN and LPN, in with that span of time, you will have the report that, oh, as, sorry, you're not comparable for RN, but you already add your LPN um, application as well. So most probably your report will say that you're not comparable for RN but you're comparable for R LPN so if you only add RN then that's it but if you put um, LPN so you have a fallback so they would say that you're not comparable for RN and when you click your LPN report they will say you are mo somewhat comparable for LPN so you can take CPR and E if you're an LPN NCLEX if you're an RN. So it's just like hitting two birds with one stone. So add RN and LPN in your NNAS application, okay? So finally, down to your last step. 
Now that you have your assessment report for NNAS, so for instance, you have a, a report that congratulations, you are comparable for RN. So it means that you can take the NCLEX. So you have to register directly to the nursing body that you wanted to um, work and registered as a nurse. So in my case, my main application was in the province of Ontario, right? So the nursing body is called College of Nurses of Ontario. So you have to open an application and a CNO. The CNO will have now the access to your account, to your files and NNAS. And so the CNO will know that you're comparable for RM. And so the CNO will say, okay, you're now eligible to take the INCLEX. So that's it. You are going to take the INCLEX and hopefully you pass the INCLEX. And then there are other requirements in the, specifically in the College of Nurses of Ontario. And I will also make a different video about that. It's going to be a very long topic. So they have different requirements, but one of the requirements is for you to take INCLEX. By the way, if you are an USRN, most probably you're not no longer need to take the NCLEX exam. They will um, process it like reciprocity. I'm not really sure about how it works, but one of my um, colleagues um, was a USRN and she didn't take the NCLEX here in Canada. They uh, honor or they recognized her NCLEX in the US. So if you're a USRN included in your NNES and hoping that they won't ask you take the NCLEX again. I think that's all. I hope I was able to um, deliver it properly and I hope you understand it. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot of questions so comment down below. Comment down below your questions and I hope I could answer it as much as I can. And thank you so much for watching and see you again in my next video. Bye.